Hi, Assalamualaikum guys My name is Yusuf Sakafi bin Azam My nom is trick 2020-985-031 And I'm going to present to you about the Africa South Korea Sahara region I'm going to talk to you about the introduction, the climate and the problem that happened in Africa So, let's go! So guys, this is the Africa South of the Sahara region. It contains West Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, and East Africa. It has 46 countries, excluding the North Africa. So what is South Africa region? Africa South of the Sahara is the world's second largest continent and was the cradle of the human species. Skeletons of the oldest known Homo sapiens are found only in Africa and Africa people contain much greater genetic variety than the rest of the world's population. The history of Africa peoples before the coming of Arabs and Europeans were rich and sophisticated. It also has a great diversity and beauty of natural landscape from Pelotus to Rivili and mountains. Its climate range from tropical arid to equatorial rainy. Its ecosystems include tropical rainforest, savanna grassland, and desert. The rocks underlying this landscape are mostly Asian and contain some of the world's largest deposits of bauxite, which is aluminium. It has cobalt, copper, gold, and diamonds, as well as newly available platinum and coltan used in mobile phones and some of the technologies. More info for you. Diamonds in Africa were formed somewhere between 600 million and 3 billion years ago when tightening force, pressure, and heat caused carbon 1,200 miles below the Earth's surface to crystallize. As recently as a million years ago, erupting molten rock brought the diamond closer to the Earth's surface. Since then, they have brought joy into the hearts of those who received them and stress into the heart of those who can afford them. The irony of diamond desire is that it centers around the idea that diamonds are precious and rare. While diamonds may be precious gems, they aren't even a little bit rare. Mines in Africa, Canada and other countries abound with the stones, which are mined, cut and then marked away up to the result in a huge profit. So around the coast, increasing in all are found. The Gold Coast was the name for a region on the Gulf of Jenny in West Africa that was rich in gold, petroleum, sweet crude, oil, and natural gas. This former region is now known as the country of Ghana. Moreover, it has 1.1 billion people and have thousands of languages. For example, Afroasiatic, Nilo-Saharan language, and more. What about the climate? Desert climate, the desert climate is an excess of evaporation over precipitation. The typically bold, rocky, or sandy surface in desert climates hold little moisture and evaporate the little rainfall they receive. There are two variants of a desert climate a hot desert climate, 18 degrees Celsius, and a cold desert climate, 3 degrees Celsius. A mean annual temperature of 18 degrees Celsius in the coldest month. At the time of high sun, which is summer, average temperatures are normally between 29 and 35 degrees Celsius and midday readings of 43 to 56 degrees Celsius are common. The world absolute heat records over 50 degrees Celsius. This includes the record of the 56.7 degrees Celsius in Death Valley, which is currently considered the highest temperature recorded on Earth. For example, Chad and Niger country. Tropical rainforest climate. Tropical rainforests are warm and humid. The temperature range from 21 to 30 degrees Celsius. The average annual temperature of tropical rainforest is above 20 degrees Celsius. These areas often receive a lot of sun due to their location around the Earth's equator on average. 
Referrals receive about 12 hours of a Sunday, but most of that is concentrated on the canopy cover of the highest trees. The tropical rainforest climate is a tropical climate usually found within 10 to 15 degrees latitude of the equator and has at least 60 millimeters of rainfall every month of the year. A tropical rainforest climate is typically hot, very humid and wet, for example, Congo River Basin rainforest. For the next, humid subtropical marine climate. A humid subtropical climate is a zone of climate characterized by hot and humid summers and cold to mild winters. Temperatures are high. The warmest month generally average about 27 degrees Celsius with mean daily maximum from 30 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius and warm. Summers are typically long, hot and humid. Monthly mean summer temperature are normally between 24 and 27 degrees Celsius. The Middle and Eastern Africa regions, this area includes Central Angola, Nutirstan, Zimbabwe, the Nyasa, Manika and Tet provinces of Mozambique. The Southern Congo provinces, Southwest, Tanzania and the majority of Malawi and Zambia. Monthly mean temperature in winter are often mild, typically averaging about 7.5 to 16 degrees Celsius. More info for you, this is the Africa's dry and rainy season. Then we go to the problem that happened in Africa. And this is environmental problem that happened in Africa. Number one, drought and desertification. Number two, threaten wildlife. Number three, soil quarry losers. And lastly, killer tropical disease. For the drought and desertification, cause of desertification comes about by a complex interaction between the natural environment and human activities. The cost may vary from region to region on account of economic conditions, population pressure, agricultural practice and politics. Human activities that destroy surface vegetation, degrades soil structure and fertility, impedes water infiltration and cause soil drying promotes desertification. This is especially true for the fragile transition zone between arid and semi-arid land where human activity has stretched the ecosystem to its limit causing expansion of deserts. Population growth and its demand on agricultural resource has promoted the desertification process. For example, cause declining soil fertility leading to falling crop yields, overuse leads to crusting of exposed topsoil by rain and sun that increase runoff, water erosion and gluing. Soil drying promotes wind erosion and increment of sand dune on rebel land. So, we go to the soil quality losers. What is soil quality losers? Soil quality losers is the most widespread problem in Africa, less nutrient and harder to work with the simple tools. Soil exposure in season rainfall lead into hard literate that resists plowing. For example, removal of the forest cover in Ethiopian highland lead to rapid erosion of the soils, forcing people to move elsewhere. Imposed for the pressure on land resource in already crowded areas. This affected the people around that, forcing people move to elsewhere. Next, this problem that be famous and we already know about that, threatened wildlife in Africa. The tropical Africa, flora and fauna are threatened by expanding logging, farming and poaching. Habitat loose and degradation, they keep hunting for sport and by farm workers and accidental trapping are the main threats. Africa is blessed with a stunning variety of wildlife 
it has more species of charismatic megafauna than any other continent. However, sadly, with ever-expanding human population and the increasing demand for land, food, and water, exacerbated by poaching, more and more species are becoming endangered. However, thanks to the conservationist past and present, many of the most endangered animals in Africa are being protected and reserved in national parks. Next, we talk about the killer tropical disease that happened in Africa. Do you know that the killer tropical disease is the most main environmental problem in Africa for the people and the food production? The disease that happened around the Africa, for example, is malaria, river blindness, and other human diseases such as AIDS or HIV and sleeping sickness, and many more that has been remaining increasing every year. Some areas of Savanna grassland have very low population because of the widespread of sleeping sickness that affecting humans around them. The sleeping sickness, which is trypanosomiasis, affected the Democratic Republic of Congo that kills about 200,000 people in a year. Trypanosoma bruse gambiens, this disease found in West and Central Africa, 90% of the reported cases of sleeping sickness, a person can be affected for months or even a year without major signs or symptoms of the disease. Number two, Trypanosoma bruse rodinsens, found in Eastern and Southern Africa, 10% of reported cases, first signs and symptoms are observed after a few months or weeks. So we go to the famous disease in Africa, the Ebola viral disease formerly known as Ebola hemorrhagic fever, is a severe often fatal illness affecting human and other primates. The virus is transmitted to people from what animal such as fruit baits, porcupines, and non-human primates, and then spreads in the human population through direct contact with the blood, secretions, organs, or other bodily fluid of affected people and with surface and material, like bedding and clothing contaminated with these floods. The Western African people Ebola virus epidemic 2013 to 2016 was the most widespread outbreak of Ebola virus disease in history, causing major loss of life and socio-economic disruption in the region, mainly in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone. The first cases were recorded in Guinea in December 2013. Later, the disease spread to neighboring Liberia and Sierra Leone, with minor outbreaks occurring elsewhere. It caused significant mortality, with the case fatality rate reported, which was initially considerable. While the rate among hospitalized patients was 57 to 59 percent, the final number. 28,000 people including 11,000 deaths for case fatality rate of 40%. Small outbreak occurred in Nigeria and Mali and secondary infection of medical workers occurred in the United States and Spain. In addition, isolated cases were recorded in Senegal, the United Kingdom and Italy. The number of cases peaked in October 2014 and then began to decline gradually. Lastly, we're going to talk about the coronavirus disease that happened all around the world. The experts believe the virus that caused COVID-19 spreads mainly from the person to the person. There are several ways that this can happen. Number one, droplets. When an infected person caught sneezes or talks, droplets or tiny particles called aerosols carry the virus into the air from their nose or mouth. Anyone who is within six feet of that person can breathe into their lungs. Number two, airborne transmission. Research shows that the virus can live in the air for up to three hours. It can get into your lungs if someone who has breathed out and you breathe it back. Experts are divided on how often the virus spread through the airborne route and how much it contributes to the pandemic. And lastly, Surface transmission. 
Another way to catch the new coronavirus is when you touch surfaces that someone who has the virus had caught or sneezed on. You may touch a countertop or doorknob that's contaminated and then touch your nose, mouth or eyes. The virus can live on surfaces like plastic and stainless steel up to 3 days. To stop it, clean and disinfect all counters, knobs and other surfaces you and your family touch several times a day. COVID-19 Also spread in Africa region, many African countries have been praised for waging an effective campaign to combat the spread of coronavirus. Despite their reputation for having fragile state health systems, the continent which has a population of more than 1 billion has had about 1.5 million cases according to the data compiled by the John Hopkins University. These figures are far lower than those in Europe, Asia, or the Americas, with the reported cases continuing to decline. Africa has recorded about 37,000 deaths compared with roughly 580,000 in the Americas. So guys, that's all for me. I will pass to the next presenter to continue their presentation. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Muhammad Akif Fahmi Ben Hanri Zaman. My matrix number is 2020-981077 and today I will be covering about the history and culture of Africa south of the Sahara. I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. Please sit back and enjoy my presentation. Hi guys, my name is Akif and I will proceed to talk about the history and culture of Africa. In this subtopic, I will be talking about the introduction, ethnic diversity and shared cultures, African groups and empires, Muslims in the North and East, and finally the colonial regimes. Moving on to the next slide, for the introduction, African was the stage for the regeneration of the first human cultures. African mixed with Arabs, Asians, and Europeans, all whom now call Africa south of the Sahara home. This geographic variety resulted from the interactions among traditional indigenous cultures, varied natural environments, the expansion of Arab Muslim cultures, the European colonial cultures, and finally the westernizing cultural invasions of the late 1900s. Next, the ethnic diversity and shared cultures. The members of ethnic groups forming a basic social and political units of the indigenous people share kinship and territorial links and frequently a language and cultural institutions. European colonies call these group tribes. The name is often applied to group of people in formerly colonial territories and is often rejected as an insult by those to whom it is applied. It is difficult to define tribe with precision. Sometimes distinctive appearance marks a tribe such as tall Maasai people. As you can see, there are two pictures of tall Maasai people in the slides. And quick facts about the Maasai people. They will drink raw cattle and goat's blood and this usually takes place in a special occasions like when women gave birth or when young men get circumcised. Tribal identities often override physical and cultural differences. Separate identities may occur within groups having similar physical characteristics and in some places individuals may move from one group to another. More than 1000 languages are spoken in the Africa south of the Sahara. Nilo Saharan languages in the north, Khoisan languages in the far south, and the Swahili in Eastern Africa. Traditional African beliefs have strong relationship between human, nature, and spiritual forces. All humans are seen as part of a continuing chain of life with reverence for ancestral spirits and the family unit. Artistic expression in sculpture, music, dance, and storytelling are central to African cultures. Wisdom and strong leadership are respected. People still make a living from the land through cultivating, herding, and hunting. All the Creole language combining several languages. The Swahili language combined the African, Indian, and Arabic element in Eastern Africa and commonly used in the television and also newspaper media. English, French, and Portuguese are still used in the former colonies. The great diversity of religious allegiance include many versions of traditional and mystic religion, and there are strong influence towards Islam, Christianity, Catholic, and Protestant. The African groups and empires. African was home to a great variety of people mixing and migrating with their cultures. Eastern Africa was a major crossroads of African people. Cattle herders from the Nile River Valley, such as the Maasai, 
live in tension with farming Bantu people such as Kikuyu of Kenya who migrated from Western and Central Africa. In South Africa, the sun and khoi khoi hunters and collectors with low population densities were gradually displaced by the agricultural and cattle herding Bantu tribes from the north who reached the present South Africa in the 1700s. Indigenous African groups in Western Africa established empires based on the wealth by trade in salt, gold, ivory, and slave. The Western African empires of Ghana, Mali empires, and Songhai empires had widespread influence. In 1324, Mansa Musa, the Malian Muslim emperor, visited Cairo, Egypt on his pilgrimage for Western Africa to Mecca. He had 500 porters, each bearing a golden staff. The example of an influence by the Malian Empire is Timbuktu, a city in modern Mali lies near the northernmost bend of the Naya River on the southern margin of the Sahara. Now it grew as a market for local crops and cattle. So a fact about, Ma about Mansa Musa, he is said to be the wealthiest individual of all human history. His net worth is said to be at $418 billion in 2019 dollars. By the AD 700s, salt trade linked mines in the Sahara with markets down the Naya River. Local gold fields made its merchants very wealthy. Before Europe, universities with libraries containing large numbers of imported books were established in Timbuktu and Jannah. Scholars from Greece, Egypt and Arabia were employed as teachers. In the south, Great Zimbabwe was the center of a widespread trading empire. By the early 1800s, the Bantu people which are the Swazis, Zulus, Zosas, and Sotos in the southernmost Africa fought with each other for territory and built strongly defended kingdoms. Moving on to the next slide, Muslim in the North and East. From the AD 600, Arab Muslims from the Middle East spread Islam to Northern and Eastern Africa. The Muslims broke Islamic religion by practicing polygamy and the use of the African drum. They introduced camels to enable Arab and African traders to exchange goods across the Sahara. It reached a major level activity from 900 until the 1800s. In the west, the routes went south from Fez and Marrakesh, which is the modern Morocco to the middle Nile River Valley. In the center, routes connected Tripoli, which is the modern Libya, and Lake Chad area. In the east, Nile River connected Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia. Later, Islamic expansion set off holy wars. Fulani warriors tried to grab grazing lands and take over the Ethiopian monarchy but failed. In 1523, they established coastal settlements that are now the countries of Eritrea, Djibouti, and Somalia. Eastern Africa's first orientation to the outside world was toward the Arab countries bordering the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. Arab established trading centers along the eastern coast of Africa often on islands such as Zanzibar and Pemba. From the AD 700s until the 1800s, ivory and gold were traded and around 5 million slaves were exported to Arabia, Persia and China. An African-Arabian Islamic culture developed with Indian and Persian influences. Communication through the Swahili Creole language became common. Swahili Creole language is a mix of Arab and Bantu languages. And now, we will be talking about the introduction to colonial regimes. European influence in Africa grew from the mid 1400s as improved ship technology made it possible to reach India and avoid the Muslim countries of southwestern Asia such as Turkey, United Arab Emirates, and Palestine. Europeans built forts at coastal trading posts in western Africa where ships could be loaded with the local slave, gold, ivory, and palm products in exchange for alcohol gun and sugar. Sectors of the Western African coast were called the Ivory Coast, Gold Coast, and Slave Coast for their chief products. Portuguese ships took gold from the Eastern Africa to pay for the skills and spices of Asia. And now for the slave trade. In 1483, the first European colonies were the Portuguese who established relations with the local Congo in northern Angola. In 1498, they reached the Mozambique coast and then they removed all the Arab traders. In 1600s, the new American colonies produced sugar, tobacco, and cotton for Europe labor. European ships transported African slaves to the Americas by entering triangular Atlantic trade. And that is a picture of the Atlantic slave trade in the slides. 
The slave were brought to the coast along the inland supply routes pioneered by African empires and Arab traders. The Portuguese slave trade devastated both Angola and Mozambique. Nearly 4 million slaves were taken to Brazil from Angola. Western and Central Africa contributed millions of slaves to Americans. The slave trade enriched European ship owners and merchants, financing the growth of ports in Europe, which then dominated world trade. The payments received by African slave trading aristocracies enabled them to buy guns and luxuries from Europe, dominate African neighbors rulers, and resist European colonizing incursions. Europeans justify enslaving peoples of different skin color and culture to assumptions of racial superiority. Between 6 million and 30 million African slaves were transported across the Atlantic Ocean to the US, Caribbean, and Latin America. Finally, in 1800s, the slave trade is going down after Britain abolished slave shipments in 1808, but some countries did not abolish slavery until 1880. Humanity effort in Europe and US resulted to return of African families freed from slavery to people new country of Liberia, the port of Freetown in modern Sierra Leone, and Libreville in modern Gabon. However, the returnees difficult to integrate with the Africans who had not been enslaved, creating a long-term social tensions. Next, the explorer and colonies. In the early 1800s, slave trade decreased. All Africa south of the Sahara becomes colonies of European countries, except for Ethiopia and Liberia. Henry Stanley, US, and David Livingston, UK, meeting many Africans and passing on knowledge from their travels. Industrial revolution demands for raw materials, for example, tropical tree crops and minerals. Later 1800s and early 1900s, French and British companies produce cocoa and palm oil while mining companies explored the interiors. Roads and railroads connected interior mines and plantations with ports to facilitate exports. The opening of Suez Canal resulting the UK to expand the port of Aden to refill its ships on the way to and from India. From 1884 until 1885, European countries competing for world power met at the Berlin Congress and divided the African continent into French, British, German, Portuguese, Belgian, Italian, and Spanish without consultations with the Africans. Occupying and controlling new colonies became more difficult and met strong resistances. Colonies became inland extensions of coastal bases and boundaries between the colonial territories divided tribes and African territories. For example, Kanem Bornu Sultanate was divided among Nigeria, Cameroon, and Naya or Chad. Germany lost its colonies, which are the modern Togo, Tanzania, and Cameroon, to British and French after World War I. And now the colonies who settled South Africa. The evolution of the Republic of South Africa is particularly significant. In the mid of 1600s, Dutch settlers built the port of Cape Town to support ship trading to and from Dutch East Indies which is now known as Indonesia. In 1814, Britain brought the Cape Colony from Netherlands. It introduced new colonies. Many Dutch settlers moved to the more isolated interior to preserve their culture. They undertook the great trek to the Orange and Val River valleys, where they established the Orange Free State and Transvaal. In the 1860s, the Boers declared a South Africa African Republic in their new lands. But the discovery of diamonds and gold caused British entrepreneurs such as Cicero Rhodes to intervene. In 1884, the occupation of Southwest Africa, modern Namibia by the Germans led Britain to annex Bechuana land, modern Botswana to block German boil links. The British also extended protectorates to Basuto land, modern Lesotho and Swaziland after Boers attacks. In 1899, the Boers declared war on the British who had instigated local conflicts. In 1990, the four colonies, which are Cape Natal, Orange Free State, and Transvaal, has formed the Union of South Africa as a self-governing dominion within the British Empire. However, the rights of Black Africans were never part of the arrangement, and Black struggles to self-determination took longer than in other African countries. Other colonies who settled. In the late of 1800s, United Kingdom developed the swath of land between Angola and Mozambique, primarily aimed at developing mineral wealth, 
The British colonization sometimes coincided with cries for help from indigenous people who perceived the trade of Portuguese colonial liberation to be greater than that of British administration and loss of land to farming settlers. In the early 1900s, Portugal discouraged settlement by Europeans in its colonies where there was a push toward greater economic exploitation of mineral resources and plantation crops led by Portuguese technology, finances and administrators. Little attempt was made to provide schooling for the African population and any disagreement was brutally restrained. African opposition gained strength with rival groups fighting each other in both Mozambique and Angola. In 1975, revolution of Portugal led to the end of a dictatorship that held on to the colonies. The new government gave independence to both Angola and Mozambique. Portuguese origin left in the late 1970s when their scorched earth policy destroyed much cropland and machinery. In the late of 1800s, European colonies arrived in Eastern Africa. They met less organized resistance to settlement than Western or Southern Africa. In 1886, Britain annexed Kenya and Uganda. And proceed to 1902, Kenya and Uganda had built a railroad from Mombasa to Lake Victoria in Uganda. In Uganda, local cotton were processed for export. Finally, we are in the last part of history and culture of African, the colonial government. Some colonial powers such as France and Britain provided basic education and healthcare. Both these countries give limited experience to Africans in local government, especially where traditional political institutions were in place and the chief or kings amenable. Elsewhere, military strength imposed control. The new college, hospitals and other social infrastructure built by the colonizers in the centers that established educated professionals in European ways. The French policy of assimilating the Africans into the French way of life linked the colonies more closely to French institutions. However, before 1918, Portugal, Belgium and Germany provided little infrastructure outside the mining and plantation areas and limited the extent of education prospects. African colonies play small parts in the world economy by exporting raw materials to manufacturers in the colonizing countries. African work on farms and in mines, often in brutal condition. Preference for European products and way of living brought culture as well as economic dependence. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Nurshifa Binti Salmi and my matrix number is 2020126525. We have learned the introduction climates, environmental problems, history and culture of Africa. So now, I will present about the sub-regions in the Africa south of the Sahara. I hope you guys will enjoy the video and will gain a lot of new input from the sharing. There are four sub-regions in Africa south of the Sahara. First, Central Africa, Second, Western Africa, Third, Eastern Africa, and Fourth, Southern Africa. I will explain each of the subregions and their main economic activities. Now you are looking at the beautiful Bali waterfalls that are a top rated tourist destination at Central African Republic. Central Africa is the least developed subregion and the largest part of which remain isolated from the world trade networks. The current population of the Central African Republic is around 4 million. Belgium and France are the main colonizer in this subregion. They encourage limited economic development through selected extractive industry, making the government since the independence struggle to cope, self-serving dictatorship and widespread civil warfare have destroyed the prospect for improving people's life. Now, let's look in the map. The orange color highlighted the countries included in the sub-region. Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, 
Cameron and the Republic of the Congo is the coastal countries that have some direct links to international market. DRC, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, and Chad have no coastal outlets and they rely for the transportation links on the Congo River. The internal political conflicts are linked to an ethnic mosaic that sits uneasily with the country boundaries established by the colonial powers. For example, Fang people dominate Equatorial Guinea, a small country, but they also live in neighboring Cameroon and Gabon. But in Gabon, a pack among smaller groups keep the largest group of Fang people out of their government. For your information, Fang people are skillful warrior and they are known as the jungle fighters. Their knowledge of the jungle and their ability to survive and function in the large tropical vegetation is legendary. While in 1994, the genocide of Nearly 1 million people brought these two small countries, Rwanda and Burundi, in the heart of Africa to the world's notice. There are 9 countries in Central Africa, which is Chad, Central African Republic, Cameroon, Democratic Republic of Congo, Gabon, Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Burundi, and Rwanda. Now let's look at the economic activities in Central Africa. The combination of physical isolation, repressive colonial history, continuing civil strife, and lack of foreign investment hinders the economic development of Central Africa. This subregion almost ignored by the global economy. There are three main economic activities in Central Africa. Mining, manufacturing, and agriculture. Mining bring in most foreign exchange to the countries of Central Africa. It could bring more if transport infrastructure were available or world markets paid higher prices. Manufacturing industry are little developed in Central African countries. Most factories are small and partially processed local mine, forests and farm products or make bulky products that do not stand transport. Agriculture remains the main economic occupation of two-thirds of the populations of this country. Most farming are using traditional methods to grow tropical root crops, cereals, fruits, and vegetables. However, only a small part of the surface is cultivated because of the combined effects of soils that are difficult to work with, plant and animal disease, and also poor transportation facilities. For example, only 3% of DRC is cultivated. The first economic activities in Central Africa is mining industry. As you can see on the right slide, this is the logo of SNH company which involves a mining industry. SNH stands for Society National Des Hydrocarbons. It is located in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and the main products of this company is oil and gas. It is founded in 1980 and a public capital company endowed with financial autonomy. SNH promotes, develops, and monitors oil and gas activities throughout the national territory. The company also works in association with international oil companies, ensuring compliance with all regulatory tax as well as control of production costs. Next one, 
is the second economic activities in Central Africa which is manufacturing industry on the right slide you can see the logo of cotton chat cotton chat is a ferrous tackle chatting company operating in a monopoly regime that buys and export all the cottons produced in chat cotton represents 40 percent of the country's export and in past year has been even more dominant at present the state owns 75% of the company. The company is located in Ain Jamena Chad and the company main product is cotton. For additional information, it is founded in 1971, producer and seller of charging cotton and its byproduct. The last economic activities in Central Africa is agriculture industry. On the right slide, you can see the logo of Peronia Incorporated. Peronia is an agribusiness operating in the Kinshasa Democratic Republic of the Congo. The company main product is oil palm. And additional information, it is founded in 1911, which consists of three oil plantations. The objective of the company in 2009 was to save plantations from the brinks of extinction. After years of substantial investment, the future of the business is secure and they are working to make a meaningful and long-term contribution to the future of the DRC. Next is Western Africa. As you guys can see here, this is the picture of the Great Mosque, which is located in the city of Jain in Mali. It is the building that is considered by many architects to be one of the greatest achievements of the architectural style the external orientation and environmental setting of western africa are a contrast to central africa its long coastline makes western africa physically more open to the world than central africa and this was the part the first part of Africa to receive European maritime contacts. The pre-colonial African empires occupied the most parts of the savanna grasslands and the colonial countries also focused activity on coastal ports linked to plantation crops in the southern forest and mining wherever they were rich or deposits this is the map of western africa in 2010 the 15 countries of western africa had the largest population in africa which is 156.3 million that ranged from nigeria to guinea bissau and the gambia which had less than 2 million people each Nigeria range across all three natural climates or vegetation zone. The countries with a southern coast have strips of rainforest back inland by moist savanna. The west facing coastal countries become drier northward. The large landlocked countries of Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger have only dry savanna and semi-desert zones. Attempts to bring together the countries of Western Africa for their mutual economic benefits centered in the economic community of Western African states and the West African Economic and Monetary Union, but these links grow slowly. This is the least countries in Western Africa with their fact. Burkina Faso, Mauritania, Mali, Ghana, Guinea-Bissau, Togo, 
includes Libor, Nigeria, Benin, Liberia, the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, Senegal, and Niger. Nigeria is the largest and most populous country in the region. Exemplifies uh, many of the problems facing the countries of Western Africa. The newly independent Western African countries began with much greater hopes of an improving feature than those in Central Africa or poorer countries in Asia. These are the three main activities, economic activities in Western Africa. Agriculture, manufacturing and service. Agriculture remains the main source of employment and income for many countries in this sub-region. The manufacturing sector produces only 3 to 20% of Western African countries' GDP. Import substitution factories for food and drink products, construction materials and other low price or high bulk goods supply local markets. The devaluation of the CFA front encouraged some local manufacturing industries. Next is service. The service sector of the economy in Western African countries grew slowly, largely through the government employment that is a major factor in many countries. However, structural adjustment demanding the reduction of civil service bureaucracy causes pain to many countries because of the importance of family and political links into such employment. The first economic activities in Western Africa is agriculture industry. This is the logo of Olam International Company. The main products of this company is cocoa, coffee, cotton, edible nuts, and packaged food. It is located in Nigeria, Africa. Ola first began as a company in West Africa in Nigeria with the export of cashew nuts, then expanded into the Republic of Benin, Ghana, and Côte d'Ivoire and subsequently to Burkina Faso, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, and Senegal. Olam is today in 15 countries in West Africa with sourcing, processing, and marketing operations covering a wide range of products. This is the Olam production based on countries. In Burkina Faso, they produce edible oil, rice, edible nuts, and packaged foods. In Senegal, they produce dairy, rice, drinks, animal feed, and protein. In Cote d'Ivoire, they produce coffee, cocoa, edible nuts, and in Ghana, they produce cashews, greens, biscuits, tomato mix, rice, and cocoa. In Nigeria, they produce cashews, cocoa, sesame, greens, animal feed and protein, and packaged food. The second economic activities in Western Africa is manufacturing industry. This is the logo of Metal Manufacturing Nigeria, which is in Africa. The products in of the company is remelted lead ingots, refined or poor lead ingots, copper ingots, and lead alloy. It was established in 2008. Metal Manufacturing Nigeria MMN is a world class producer of different types of lead ingots. Based in Nigeria, they are fast emerging as a leading company in the field of lead metal recycling and exports. They manufacture lead ingots required by a wide range of sector and industry. Their products are known for accuracy, purity, and strength. 
The third economic activities in Western Africa is service industry, name of company, OE Travel and Tours. This is the logo of OE Travel and Tours. The type of service that this company offered is transportation service. It is located in Accra, Ghana. Its head office is in Kumasi. Nana Opoku Akemang is a famous businessman and the founder of OE Travel and Tours. As a leading transport company in the country currently, they are committed to providing excellent transport services with very high safety standard and has gained a reputation as the best transport service provider in the sub-region. This is the picture of the bus that OE travel and tourists provide. Now let's look at the famous selected place in OE travel and tourist package. The first one is Kakum National Park which located in Ghana. Kakum National Park is in the coastal plain region. It provides the easiest access to rainforest along with its famous canopy walkway. If you want to visit Kakum National Park, you can take a guided walk through forest at ground level. The guides are knowledgeable about plants and animal life. The second one is St. George Castle, which is also located in Ghana. St. George Castle is a UNESCO heritage site that was built as a trading post by the Portuguese in 1482 and captured by the Dutch in 1637. If you are interested in history, this may be a good place for you to visit because you can see the Grim Dungeons, Punishment Cells, Door of Noritan and Tarot Room imprisoned the Ashanti King for 4 years. The third one is Paga Crocodile Pond. Paga Crocodile Pond is a sacred pond in Paga in the Upper East region of Ghana, which is inhabited by West African crocodiles. So if you are fans of crocodiles, in here you can get up close and personal with the crocodiles. Next is Shy Hills Resource Reserve, which is located in Accra, Ghana. So it is a great place to be when you want to have some attention and the fifth one is center for national culture if you want to buy some local art then this is the best spot for you to see a variety of arts the last one is Kwame and Kruma Memorial Park Kwame and Kruma Memorial Park is located in downtown Accra, the capital of Ghana. It is dedicated to the prominent Ghanaian president Kwame Nkrumah. The memorial complex was dedicated in 1992 and is situated on the site of the former British colonial polo grounds in Accra. Let's move on to Eastern Africa. Mount Kilimanjaro is a dormant volcano in Tanzania. It is the highest mountain in Africa and the highest single freestanding mountain in the world. Now let's look at the map of Eastern Africa. Eastern Africa's distinctiveness comes partly from its history of contact with Arabian and Indian influences to the east. The countries of Eastern Africa form two groups. In the north, Ethiopia is separated from the Red and Arabian Seas by Eritrea, Djibouti, and Somalia. The uplands of Ethiopia force moisture to rise and cause seasonal rains that feed into the Blue Nile River and support agriculture. The surrounding lands are mainly arid. To the south, the plateau area of the former British colonies of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania is broken in the west by major reef valleys and has volcanic peaks rising above. Ethiopia 
has the distinction of being the only large African country that was not colonized by a European power. Tanganyika, Uganda, and Kenya, and also Zanzibar gained their independence from United Kingdom in the early 1960s following guerrilla warfare in Kenya. Tanganyika and Zanzibar from United to from Tanzania in 1964. The coastal people in the north are mainly Muslim while those in Ethiopia and the southern countries are mainly Christian or traditional animist groups. Let's look at the least countries in Eastern Africa. Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, Tanzania, and Uganda. Economic activities in Eastern Africa. The countries in Eastern Africa have made progress in human development basics such as education and healthcare, but in the year 2010, their HDI still indicate that they are all still at low levels of development globally. Now, let's take a look at the three economic activities in Eastern Africa which are agriculture, manufacturing and service. In the general absence of mineral resources and the slow development of manufacturing and service industry, most countries in Eastern Africa depend on agriculture as an economic base. Commercial farming is important and much foreign exchange comes from export of farm products. In 2010, manufacturing made up between 5 and 13 percent of GDP in Eastern African countries and for most countries the service economy is poorly developed apart from extensive government bureaucracies. The first economic activities in Eastern Africa is agriculture industry. You can see on the right slide the logo of Kenya Nut Company Limited. It is located in Nairobi, Kenya. The company's products are macadamia and cashew nuts, coffee, chocolates, tea and all additional information. The company operates seven farms on over 8,000 acres. The products marketed under five brands out of Africa, Nutfields, Nasu, Delishwa and Morindai. This is an example of products. The second economic activities in Eastern Africa is manufacturing industry. Name of company, Kira Motors Corporation, KMC. On the right slide, you can see the logo of the company. It is located in Tinda, Kampala, Uganda. The company's products are Kayula EVS, Kira EV, Kira EV Smack, Kayula Solar Brass, and Kira EVC. Additional information, Kira EV is Africa's first electric vehicle. Kira EV Smack is Africa's first hybrid electric vehicle and Kayula Solar Bus is the first Africa's solar-powered electric bus. This is the Kayula Solar Bus. Next. The third economic activities in Eastern Africa is service industry. Name of company, Bonfire Adventures and Events Limited. On the right side is the logo of the company. It is located in Nairobi, Kenya. And the type of service is tourism. Additional information, Bonfire Adventures operates in Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, Zanzibar, Uganda, Circles, Mauritius, Europe, Turkey, Asia, India, Sri Lanka, and Middle East. This is the picture of Bonfire Adventures Resort. Today, the sub-region 
has a major tourist industry attracting millions each year from wealthier countries to watch its large animal themed game parks. Kenya is always ahead of the others. Kenya has also made the most progress in its tourist industry. Tourism was the largest forage exchange earner in 2007 when it earned Kenya over $1 billion but it has since slipped to third place after horticulture and tea. This is the example of the tourist attractions in Kenya. Amboseli National Park, Masai Mara National Reserve, Lake Nakuru National Park, Nairobi National Park and Savo East and West National Park. Welcome to the last sub-region which is Southern Africa. You guys can enjoy the view of Victoria Falls which is located in Zambia and Zimbabwe border. Victoria Falls, also known as the smoke that thunders. It is the largest single curtain of falling water in the world. Let's take a look at the map of Southern Africa. So the countries included in this sub-region is from here until here. So there are 11 countries. And here is the part of the Eastern Africa that we have discussed in the previous slide. Southern Africa lies at the southern margin of the tropical climatic environments. Seasonal tropical climates in the northern parts have summer rains that decrease southwestward toward the aridity of Namibia. After nearly 40 years as a self-governing domination in the British Empire, the white Africaners who led the South African government imposed apartheid policy in 1948. The people of Southern Africa include a wider variety of major ethnic groups than the other African subregions, reflecting the last four countries of history that witnessed major movement of people of all colors. This is the least countries in Southern Africa with their flag. Angola, Malawi, Swaziland, Botswana, Mozambique, Zambia, Lesotho, Namibia, Zimbabwe, Madagascar, and South Africa. Now, let's look at the economic activities in Southern Africa. In the early 2000s, Southern Africa had 20% of the population of Africa south of the Sahara and produced 53% of its total GNI PPP. The Republic of South Africa itself produced 41% of the region's total. However, the sub-regional economic environment deteriorated because of factors such as the Zimbabwean collapse, the Zambian reliance on stone copper mining redevelopment, and the spread of HIV and AIDS. Here is the three economic activities in Southern Africa, which are agriculture diversity, mining, and services. Subsistence farming remains the economic mainstream for over 80% of the population in the very poor countries. Even in countries where mining or tourism are important, subsistence farming occupies over 50% of the workforce. Corn is a common staple food grown on thousands of small farms in Southern Africa. Commercial farming is most significant in the more diversified economy of South Africa. South Africa also made itself largely self-sufficient in food during the years of international sanctions. It produced a variety of temperate and subtropical grains, vegetables and fruits together with sugar, cotton and livestock products. 
Land ownership reform is a major issue in the parts of Southern Africa where white colonial settlers took land. Next is mining. The extraction of mineral resources dominates the economies of Angola, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, Zambia and Zimbabwe. It involves them deeply in the global economic system. Mining also has negative environmental impacts including air and water pollution and the desertification of local areas poisoned by fumes. Without stable political conditions and good management of the national economy and also inadequate transportation facilities make it difficult for them to attract multinational corporation investors. Multinational corporations, however, also do not always retain the wealth they gain to local communities while their license payments and taxes go to central governments that may direct spending away from the mining areas. South Africa is the world's top producer of platinum and a major producer of gold, diamonds, iron, and several strategic metal ores. Mining products often refined in South Africa made up 30% of the country's export in 2008. The last one is services. Service industry from shops and banks to government jobs and tourist facilities increase throughout Southern Africa but especially in South Africa. Tourism is a growing feature of the economies in Botswana and South Africa. There is a special interest in the national parks where large animals are protected. In 2002, South Africa received 6.5 million tourists, Zimbabwe received 2 million and Botswana 1 million. In Zimbabwe, tourism was the faster growing sector of the economy before the political troubles of the early 2000s reduced it dramatically. So now let's look at the first economic activities in Southern Africa which is agriculture industry. Name of company Afri Agri Services. On the right slide you can see the logo of Agri Company. It is located in South Africa. The products of this company is maize. Additional information, AFRI is one of South Africa's leading agriculture companies home to AFRI Green Management which handles and stores not only maize but also wheat, sunflower, soya beans, barley and sorghum at more than 100 operational points throughout South and Southern Africa including Congo, Brazzaville, Uganda, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Zambia. Also on the right slide, here you can see the picture of cornfield in South Africa. The second economic activities in Southern Africa is mining industry, name of company Dead Marine Namibia. On the right slide, you can see the logo of Dead Marine Namibia Company. It is located in Namibia. The product of this company is diamond. Diamonds were discovered in Namibia in 1908 when railway worker Zacharias Liwala found a diamond that would change the course of history of Namibia. So, he handed it to his supervisor August Touch and a diamond rush ensued in Coleman's Cop near Lodris, resulting in the mining of millions of carrots for colonial Germany until World War I in 1914. It is rumored that those years, the diamond deposits were so rich that Storch and other miners could often simply pick up the diamonds from the valley floors. On the right slide, you can see the picture of Namibia Desert Sea. 
The third economic activities in Southern Africa is service industry. Name of company Botswana Tourism. It is located in Botswana and the company product is tourism. Game viewing is usually at its best during the dry season in winter which is from May to August and in the hot springtime months of September and October when the animals are concentrating near rivers, pools and water holes. The chances of spotting lions are better just after sunrise than at other times. In summer, most of the game tends to lie up during the heat of the day, so the recommended times to set out on drive are the early mornings and late afternoons. Elephants though are wide awake and active in and around the rivers in the hotter hours. On the right slide is the game viewing in Botswana and this is the logo of Botswana Tourism. So that is all from me. Thank you guys for watching.